Hello and welcome to my channel and today I thought we'd do some upgrades on my mini lathe. Let's get into that. What we're going to be dealing with is the upgrades for the tapered roller bearings that go in the head and the spindle and also the steel gears that go in here that go on the spindle and the high low gear. I noticed when I was looking around on the internet that uh, a lot of people talking about upgrading their bearings, their uh, headstock bearings. And everyone seems to be shying away from uh, the taper roller bearings and opting for angular contact bearings. I thought they were super heavy uh, duty and they would really suit me fine for what I want to do. But after tearing it all apart, I really understand why they were shying away from it. The uh, angular contact bearings that everyone's talking about, they're the exact same thickness, which makes it a lot easier when you're putting, it, putting them in. You don't have to do anything extra. Let's put it this way. There's a, a spacer, a gear, and a spacer that go inside the head, in between the bearings. The tapered roller bearings are 1.25 millimeters thicker. When these bearings go into the outer race, they stick up 1.25 millimeters. Well, on the opposite side, they're also 1.25 millimeters in. So what that does, the stack up on all of this, you know what I mean, stack up. This here stuff, there's a lot more space. There's another hundred thousandths worth of space. So you need to make a couple of shims, 50 thousandths. Either make a new set of these and uh, make them 50 thousandths thicker. That would be 1.25 millimeters thicker. Or I chose to just make two 50,000 thick shims. Anyway, so when you put the whole thing together, what you need to do is the spacer that goes on the outside, you have to make that about 100,000 shorter. That's 2.5 millimeters shorter to accommodate the two bearings. Also, I noticed the people that were putting their bearings on, whether or, uh, they were angular contact or taper roller bearings, they were literally pressing these bearings onto the spindle. And I noticed these were also pressed in. With the original bearings, they never set. You don't really need to set any preload on them. Put them in there, tighten it up, and you're good to go. As good as they can get with uh, those bearings. What I'm getting at is to set a preload, you have to have those bearings. You need them to be able to move. Move them to tighten up the spindle nuts and set the load. You need to polish this down until the bearings are just a slip fit. I took off about three to four tenths. There was a two tenths press fit from the diameter on the 
spindle to the ID on the original bearings. I took off maybe three tenths. So it's just a, a tenth, maybe two tenths of, of a slip fit. And you'll see when we're uh, setting the preload why I did that. Okay, uh, let's start pressing all of this together. Let's do this. I'm going to press the outer races in here and make sure the larger part of the ID is facing up. Set that in there. Like I said, I was going to use the outer, the older <laughs> bearings only because it's the same size as the race. And I need to put some spacers on there. A couple of aluminum ones. I have a brass one. And now uh, I could start. to make sure that it pressed all the way in through the shoulder. It appears it did. Okay, turn it over and do the same thing. Place the outer race with the bigger diameter from the taper facing up. The old bearing. My shims. And let's start pushing this in. It's in there. All right. These old bearings were good for something. <laughs> it appears it's all the way down. Both of them are all the way down to the shoulder. Let's get back over to the table and start putting a spindle in. Those races look nice in there. And they both look like I put them in the right way. Okay. I had marked that this was the front of the head, which I, the chuck side I'm calling the front, and this is the side that had the gears. I drew all that out. So... The first thing that goes on the spindle is this gear cover, gear co I'm sorry, bearing cover. Uh, I turned this rib here back 75 thousandths so it clears the race on uh, the tapered roller bearing because it sticks out, like I said, uh, 50 thousandths further. Uh, so that goes on first. And then it says I put the inner race on the spindle. All the way up against the shoulder. That was still snug. I could feel the drag on it. I had already packed these bearings with high pressure lube. Premium grease, premium red grease, extreme pressure lube. 
Next thing that goes on would be the key that's in here. Have a little brass hammer. The key is in. Now, what I need to do is I can put my 50,000 shim in there that I made. I don't know if you can see this, but it'll disappear right inside here. And my original spacer. The spacer I got with it. Let's check to see if this steel gear fits on the spindle and over that key. There it is. That's going to be locked in between all these spacers and the two tapered roller bearings. I have to take this out and put this in. That was not that easy. <laughs> but I, I could just imagine if that was a press fit in there. Okay, the next thing is the spacer. And the 50,000th extra spacer that I built, made. Okay, now it's the last tapered roller bearing. The next thing is the spacer that you made smaller. I need to put this key in here. And that key is for this gear right here that comes with it. Now it's putting the jam nuts together. They're right hand threads. And this is where you set your preload. You know, all of this would be a lot easier if this head was bolted down. I'm going to bolt it down to the waist so that it's not moving and I can put both my hands on it. I think that would be a lot easier. Let's go do that. I bolted the head back onto the waist, onto the machine. I, I do have to take it off again. And... I have my indicator here. Take a closer look at this indicator. Indicator set on zero. When I push on the spindle, there's about 15 thousandths worth of uh, movement. I only want one to five thousandths. Let's start tightening this up. I have a bar here to hold this while I start tightening the jam nut. I have five six thousandths. It's got to be better than that. That is not going to work for me. See, now if those bearings, the inner races, were pressed onto that, I could never adjust this preload. Okay, what I have here is two 
pieces of steel where I can leverage them and I have my spanner This is a half thousand indicator. I, all right, as you saw in the indicator, there was no more than maybe six tenths, but I'm sure as it runs, it will get looser. I'm gonna have to run this for a while and uh, have the bearings run in and let's get this head off of here and put in all those other internal gears the high and low gear and the handle and stuff like that let's do that i moved everything over to my little bench and what i need to do is put a little grease on here and i'm just gonna use my extreme pressure lube I'm just gonna put a little bit on here I plan on making means to be able to get in here and do this at any time kind of jumping ahead here but I believe that's going to be my next video okay I have a key on here so I have to pay attention to where my key is that really wasn't that hard okay that's in place. I'm going to tap this a little bit to get it started. Okay, that's tapped into the chuck side bearing. Now I'm going to bring this thing over to the press and press this in until it bottoms out. Let's do that. Should go all the way till it bottoms out. It's there. All right. Beautiful. Let's get back to the table. Next thing I need to do is Put a snap ring on. Okay, that snap ring is on. On this side, what I need to do is put a key in here. And I bought all the steel gears for this and never thought about my power pulley. But I'm going to put it back on and if I have to make one, I will. Kind of line this up with the key. The key way with the key. There we go. 
and now put this snap ring on. That key is on. Okay. This is my uh, high low gear is what we just put in there. And I need to put the shifter back together. Let's do that. Let's bring that camera a little closer and put this sh shifter gear fork shifter. I'm not sure what they call it. I heard someone call it a fork. I'm not sure if they call it a shifter fork or what. But anyway, let's put it on there. <laughs> Get this camera a little closer. First of all, this fork needs to go in between those two gears. This needs to go on it. So as you turn it, as you turn, it shifts this fork up and back. Well, let's quit talking about it. Let's just do it. Okay. Put this on there. Woo! Let's try to get this in. Looks like that is in a proper place. Sorry if my hands are in the way. Now I just have to drop the ball. The ball that I have into this hole. Put the spring on there. In there. Not on there. Take my three millimeter hex head or a hex wrench. Shift it into neutral and shift it into low gear. Low gear, high gear. All right, what's next? I'm going to go ahead and put this head on and I'm also going to put the cover on here, change out those gears. Uh, I got the gears that I really wanted in here. Put the motor on, side gears. There's nothing exciting about that. As far as I'm concerned, really, if you really need help putting it back together, because you just tore it apart to get this done. I uh, have my last video. You can go back and watch that. Uh, it's the headstock and spindle removal. Which should help you just watch it in reverse. <laughs> if you watch that, it should help you. I'll bring you back when this thing is running. 
All right, it's all back together. I put it back on my stand on top of the pan, chip pan, and uh, I did turn it on to make sure before I bolted it all together onto the stand it all worked. But for your enjoyment, <laughs> let me show you. There it is. And the feed. That works too. So I put all the steel gears in. They're loud. They may wear in. There's a reason I put these bearings in and all the steel gears. I plan on putting a one horse, a two horse, uh, AC motor on here with a, a mechanical veritable speed and I have to hook up a drum switch for forward and reverse. I don't know much about electricity but I'm learning how to do that on YouTube but I think this video <laughs> is coming to an end so until next time, enjoy! <laughs>